right, so let's get into just the basic creating of the uh, if and else. So we're just going to drag that over to our main body right here. Now what we need is a comparator uh, for logic and then we're going to get, pardon me, not that one. We want the dark blue one, this one right here. We're going to drop that down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test for zero and we're going to place that right there. So if it's zero, then what we want to do is we want to set the timer to the full amount, but we need to actually get the time first. So let's go to the entity data. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go and find the MBT data for the entity. So it should be down here. Uh, we want a number MBT data one, which is, is this it? Uh, yeah, so it's uh, get MBT data for this. So we want this particular one for the entity. And then we're just gonna call this timer. Uh, now it's not, it's recommended to keep it very unique for your mods if you're using MBT because other mods can also assign MBT to players as well. So if you have a mod, I suggest putting your mod name and then your timer. So mod name and then timer for whatever you need. Um, then what we need to do is basically set that variable to the default setting. So we're going to go back to entity uh, entity management this time, and then we're going to go down to the MBT section, and we're going to grab that. We're going to use the same name, and we're going to set this to whatever time that we want. Now remember that it's measured in ticks, not um, not actual time. So we need to basically set it to an actual time. Now there is 20 ticks in a second. Uh, I believe it's uh, every whatever. If you want like a one minute, then it's like 60 of those 20 ticks. So if you want to basically create a minute, then it's uh, 20, one times 20 times 60, and that will be one minute. Um, I think that's 120 if I'm correct. So I'm just gonna quickly calculate that. Uh, 20 times 60, one, 1,200 is one minute. So if we want say 20, uh, 15 seconds, uh, then it should be 10 seconds is 200. Um, 15 seconds is 300. So if we want 15 seconds, then we can do that, and then it will cycle every 15 seconds. Uh, if we want 20 seconds, so every tick, uh, or every, pardon me, every second, then we do 20 ticks and so on. So we're going to basically set this to just um, 100. This will do five seconds, and then it will basically reset the timer. And then we need to set our else statement to zero. And what this is going to do is if the value is equal to zero, then what it's going to do is reset the timer to our dedicated amount of uh, ticks. Now this zero actually shouldn't be that. We need to subtract the time. So we're going to go and use a math operator and then set it to minus and then we're going to add our one here. And then we need to get the variable again as well. So we're gonna do this. So our time, or pardon me, our set our variable to our get variable for the time, the current time that it is. And then we're going to subtract one and this will happen every tick. So basically if it's equal to zero, then it's going to reset the timer to 100 immediately. If it's not, then what it's going to do is count down the timer itself. So that's basically how we set that up. Now uh, to basically have something happen, now you can run this from an external procedure or you could do it in the same thing as your timer, it doesn't really matter. Uh, depending on where you set it up, you will have to have it on an update tick as well. It's best to have it on an update tick of some sort. But um, what we can do, because it's in the same procedure and it's using both an update tick, we can actually do something for the player like, I don't know, we'll just uh, give them a item or something like that. So 
Actually, we could spawn a gem as well. That would work. So if we go down here, we can spawn gem. And then what we'll do is we'll just uh, drop some diamonds or something like that. So we'll drop some diamonds. And then what we'll do is we'll save our procedure. And then we'll go in game and quickly test that. All right, before I forget, I almost forgot uh, immediately to test something else. Uh, we need to actually determine what the time is. Now, putting this into the procedure like this will obviously spawn diamonds every tick. So we don't want to do that. We want to actually test for our time. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to grab an if statement. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our variable up here. We're going to grab our our mod um, MBT type and then what we're going to do is we're testing if it's zero so if it's zero then what we're going to do is we're going to have it basically run the script after now you can have your test at the beginning or you can have it at the, at the end it doesn't really matter where you have your test for your timers I usually have my timers at the end of my script because um, it just works out better that way if I use a different method. Sometimes you can also increase the number if you wanted to, but the value needs to be set a little bit different for this. Uh, instead of setting the value to 100, you would set it to zero, and then you would set this to the maximum number for ticks. It's just easier to subtract rather than to add, honestly. So that's why I uh, set it up that way, but you can increase it as well if you want to display a counting up timer which is sometimes the case what people want to see, but sometimes you want it counting down as well if you're using a display timer as well. So that's the reason why I, I use that. Again, if you want it to count up, then you would set this to your maximum uh, time. You would set it to zero, and then you would change the operator type to plus one instead, and that will increase it by one. Uh, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to count down and we're going to have our basic our, our basic uh, timer to basically test if it's zero. If it's zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to reset it to uh, 100. Now, if you want to basically, when you first spawn in the world, having it set up like this will always give them a diamond right off the bat because it's going to be, your variable is always going to be set to the default zero value. So if you want it to basically um, have a delay for your time before then, then you want to have your script after your timer, because in this case, it's going to already test for zero. It's going to set the time. And then what it's going to do is it's going to start decreasing it. And then it's going to basically, when it gets to uh, one tick left, then it's going to subtract it. It's going to be zero. And then this is going to be, this is going to run. So in our case, we're going to set it to uh, run 15, or pardon me, is it 10? I think it's um, every five seconds, then it's going to give us a diamond. So let's save this and then we'll hop in game. All right, so I'm just gonna create a really quick uh, world. We're just gonna use the default settings and it should generate a new world. And then after 15 seconds, what we're going to do is we're going to get a diamond every, or pardon me, not 15, every five seconds, we'll be getting a diamond. So we'll just let the world load in and then we should be able to get a diamond after every five, every five seconds. So there's one diamond. Now there's 20 ticks or 100 ticks between every time we get a diamond. So this is exactly 100 ticks. So again, we got three diamonds. So you can see it's um, giving us one every 100 ticks or so. All right, so let's go and we'll try it on a global um, procedure and we'll set the timer to 300 just to show that it's, it can be adjusted. So we need a global variable for this one and we're going to go to variables. We're going to set a number variable and then we're going to give it a name. Uh, I suggest using your mod ID. So mod name and then what you would do is something like timer or whatever timer that you're using it for and then you can set it to basically any one of these particular variables 
uh, all of them will should work just fine. This will only run for the session that the game is running. This will run in the particular world. This will run in all worlds. Uh, player lifetime will basically run for only if the player has been alive for, and then it will reset during after they uh, basically die. And the persistent will constantly run for the player regardless if they die or not. So those are your basic options for global variables. I'm just going to select the uh, map one for the default and we're going to make sure that it's on the under the num number actual variable um, type and then we're just going to make sure that we have our named set for it. So after that uh, you can set it to your leave it to the default setting and or depending on how you want it set up you can set it to 100 I guess as well um, or your actual time but generally you can just leave it to the default you can set it in procedures anyhow. So let's go back into our procedure and we're going to get rid of all the MBT uh, variables here. And what we're going to do is build a um, particular one from scratch. So what we need to do is we need to go and grab our global variable. And then we're going to test for global variable is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, then what we need to do is we need to um, basically set that to, so we need to go back to our global variable. We'll set this to whatever timer that we want. So in our case, we're going to set this to 300. This will do 15 seconds for giving the entity a diamond. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically set, um, actually, you know what? Uh, we're going to set our timer under something a little bit different. We're gonna set the timer under world, um, world tick update. And then we're going to basically just set our timer to zero. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna move this part into a, a separate procedure. So this is basically what we want to set up for our actual procedure itself. So, um, oh, pardon me, we need to do that subtract thing as, as well again. So minus one, and then we need to get our timer. So like that. So with global variables, it's the exact same thing. If you wanna increase it uh, rather than subtract, then you would set this to 300, you would set this to zero, and then you would add to the value of the global timer. Uh, in our case, we are just going to use a subtraction timer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to zero and this to 300 for 15 seconds. So after you have that, save it. And then we're going to create another procedure to actually test for our global timer for our player update tick. Now that sometimes happens, just um, regenerate the code by clicking that little green tag up here and most cases it will fix the building errors. All right, so let's go into our procedure. We'll create another one. We'll call this um, give item. And then what we'll do is we'll select player update tick because we need to test if for the timer on a constant scale as well. So player update tick. And then what we want to do is we want to spawn a gem, spawn a gem, and we're gonna give them uh, gold ignits this time. So we'll just uh, find gold ignits. And then what we'll do is we'll, we need to test for our time as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab our global variable and then we're going to grab a local or local operator and we're going to test if this is equal to zero and if it is equal to zero then we're going to spawn our golden ignit now because this is running from a separate procedure and it's not after our timer uh, this will run immediately when the player spawns in the world or whenever the timer is actually run. Now, if the world timer is, um, say another player joins after this, the world is generated, then it might generate at a random time after they've joined. So just something to keep note because it is running on the world side now. 
uh, it, the timer is going to be different than from what the player is actually. So if it's running through MBT on the actual player, then it would be running for the player immediately when they join rather than um, when they actually join if the world's already generated then it's on the world side so it will be running constantly for the world itself so let's uh just save this and then we'll save that and then we'll go in game again all right so i'm going to create a new world and then we're going to just set survival and then we're going to pop into the world itself so we should get a golden ignit right off the bat uh or maybe 15 seconds will pass and we'll get one i'm not entirely sure how it'll work we'll see when it actually happens so just wait a couple seconds and then we should get a golden ignit. there we go we got one so uh i guess the player update tick actually runs after the world update tick so that's probably what's going on there so it does happen after when you use it in this particular case. So again, we got another gold magnet after a 15 second time window. So again, that's all how you basically set up timers. Uh, if you found this tutorial useful, uh, definitely consider subscribing, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.